Welcome back to Words and Pixels. Earlier in the year, I had done a mini ITX build, which has been my main desktop and it's still going pretty strong back there. But now my mom has asked me if I could build her a computer because she's going to be doing some work from home and she would like a computer that's more powerful than the one that she has already. So I asked her what kind of budget we wanted. We decided on a budget that was going to be around $400, give or take. And I set to work gathering all the components. I had a really good time recording the process of building my last computer, so I thought it would be fun to record myself building this computer as well. Just like I did last time, let's go through the components one by one and I'll explain what I picked and why. I'm going to leave the full parts list down in the description below. You could check that out if you want to do a similar build. I'm also going to leave some general PC building resources down below. If you're new to PC building, these are things that you could check out to learn how to do it. Let's go ahead and talk about the components. For the processor, we have the AMD Athlon 3000G. My parents are mostly going to be using their computer for office work, browsing the web, checking their email. So this dual core processor will be more than enough to handle all of that. We have a micro ATX B450 motherboard from Gigabyte. Now this motherboard is definitely going to be compatible with the processor I picked for this build. However, I do want to point out that there is, I don't know if you can see that well, there is a little sticker on it now that says it's Ryzen 3000 ready. And that's good because in that little pink computer there, I have a Ryzen 5 3400G. So my plan is I do want to do some upgrades on that computer later in the year, which I will probably film. And I'm going to take that processor and I'm going to donate it to my parents when I do those upgrades. So that way they could get a little upgrade and this should be compatible with that upgrade when it happens. So stay tuned for information on that. For storage, we have a 500 gigabyte solid state drive from Crucial. The case that I have also has multiple drive bays, so I could add additional drives in the future. For the fans, I have these two little Apavia fans. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, Apavia? I think it's a Pavia. I don't know. Anyway, I have these left over from my last build, so I figured I might as well use them. One has white LEDs and the other has pink LEDs. So my thought is that I could put the white in the middle and the pink underneath, and it should have a cool kind of like two-tone glowing effect when the computer's turned on, but I don't actually know how that's going to look, so I hope it comes out okay. Otherwise, I'm going to have to swap out one of the colors fans with the other, but we'll see how that looks. For RAM, we have the Corsair Vengeance LPX. We have two 8GB sticks, so it's 16GB in total, and DDR4. For the RAM, I probably could have shaved a little money off of this build by going for less RAM. The only thing is I'm not really sure what software my mom is going to be downloading on her computer yet. She's talking to her job to see if she could get some of the software that they have on their work computers at home. We don't know what it's going to be. So I figured I would just go for a little bit of extra RAM. But if you wanted to shave some money off of this build and you were going to do something similar, you could probably go down to an 8 gigabyte kit and see how you do with that. And you could always upgrade it in the future. Um, my mom's primarily going to be using this computer, but my dad also wanted to play CDs and watch DVDs on it. So we got him an optical drive. We also have a 400 watt power supply. If you remember from the last build, the power supply came completely smashed. So I am really, really hoping that this one is okay. I guess we will find out when we open it later. And then I was gonna try to pick up the case, but I'm old and tired. So it's a Thermaltake Versa H15. From other builds that I have watched with this case, it is nice. The side panels could be very easily removed and it has a lot of room for cable management. So as much as I did love building in my little pink shoe box there, it was a bit difficult because that was a very tiny cramped case. So I am looking forward to having a little more room. And that's it. So let's go ahead, put everything together. I'm gonna do a little time lapse and I'll check in periodically with you guys and let you know where I am in the process. 
and then we will plug it in and turn it on for the first time and hopefully it works. All right, so as you can see, I am surrounded by stuff. I really need a larger workbench, but this is what I've got to work with today. So we're gonna start off by putting together the case. So we have the Thermaltake Versa, which has not even been unboxed, so we'll do that. Then I have the power supply and the case fans, and we're gonna go ahead and put them all together. So I will check in with you guys when that's done. Wish me luck. Okay, so just to show you what I did, we have the power supply mounted here at the bottom and pointed towards the bottom of the case, which actually has a really nice little vent on it. And then we have the two fans. So I have the white one on top, the pink one on the bottom. They're both going to be intake fans. So the grill is facing towards the inside of the case. And yeah, we have a mess of wires that's already making my heart palpitate. <laughs> I just, that's like my least favorite part of this whole process is all of the wires and there's so many, particularly from the power supply and we have all of these from the front panel here. So we'll have to sort those out later, that'll take forever. Now it's time to assemble the motherboard. So we're going to put the CPU in its socket, we'll put on the CPU cooler and we'll also add the RAM and then I'll check back in with you guys before we screw it all into the case. Alright, so we have the CPU and we have the CPU cooler on. And then we actually have four slots of RAM, which is pretty good. I think I have them in the correct slot, so here's slot one, and then slot two, and then I guess if I get three and four, they would go there, according to that little chart on the motherboard. Alright, so I think all there's left to do is, <laughs> I say that like that's easy, but all there's left to do is screw this into the case, put in the SSD and the optical drive, and then connect a whole bunch of wires for a very, very, very long amount of time. So I'm going to get this part all set up and we will catch up afterward.
So we are finally done. Maybe unless I forgot to plug something in, but hopefully I didn't. Sorry you didn't get to see the last few minutes of the time lapse. My camera ran out, but honestly it was just me looking at the manual and plugging in stuff. But let's take a little tour and see what we did. Uh, so I have all of my cables routed. I tried to just kind of like group them together with little ties here. I have a bunch that are just hanging out in the empty drive bays. I figured that's a okay place to store them for right now. And yeah, I mean, is it great cable management? No, but this computer is going to have solid side panels anyway, so it's not like anybody is going to be looking in here. I just really wanted to make sure that it was all clear of the motherboard, at least as much as possible. The other thing I wanted to note was that I had been concerned about the fans because I realized that there was only one fan header on the motherboard, which I had not realized. However, I was very lucky that these fans have a connector. It's called a Molex connector. I totally might be pronouncing that wrong, but anyway, it does connect to the power supply. So the only thing is that they can't be controlled from the BIOS, so I'm not gonna be able to adjust the speed of them. They're just going to run at full speed, but hopefully they will light up and they'll just run at full speed and we'll see what happens from there. And yeah. That is it. So I'm really hoping everything works when I plug it in. I'm going to put the case back together and then I will meet you over by my computer desk and we will go ahead and <laughs> see if it turns on. All right, so I had to do some rearranging on my desk to fit the computer. It really is very big compared to my little pink computer, but I just wanted to test it out before I brought it to my parents and set it up on their desk. So let's turn it on and see what happens. Hopefully it starts up. So I'm going to Make sure the monitor's on. We're gonna hit the power button. Ooh! I'm pleased the fans are working, so that's a good sign. I really actually do like the dual color. I think that looks kind of cool. And let's see if we get anything on the screen. Uh, saying no signal, but now it's change. Ah, oh, yep! This is so exciting, yay! All right, so I'm so glad that that worked. I'm not going to play around in the BIOS tonight because I am just wiped, but I do want to get Windows 10 installed, so I'm going to let that do its thing and maybe make a cup of tea while it's doing it. So I will check back in with you guys in a little bit. A few moments later. I hope you guys don't mind, but I ended up just getting water instead of tea because I was very dehydrated, so. Just needed some good old H2O. I'm so tired. Overall, things went really well. Windows 10 didn't have an issue installing. I am going to take a look at the BIOS tomorrow and just make sure everything is completely okay before I give it to my parents. I also have some other work to do in terms of getting all the stuff that they want installed, installed and ready. LibreOffice we're gonna put on there as well as some other programs they requested. So I'm going to get that all ready tomorrow, but yeah, it went totally fine. I'm very pleased with how this entire build went. There's only one or two little hangups. Uh, first off, I struggled for some reason with the IO shield. I don't know why that took me such a long time, but it did and it was embarrassing. Then there was the issue with the fans. This had happened off camera, but I was about to plug everything in and I realized that there was only one fan header on this motherboard. And I started to freak out because I have three fans and then I was able to plug the two front fans into the power supply. I was very lucky that that worked out okay because it doesn't always, not every fan has that adapter. So 
luckily I had those left over from my last build, and luckily they just happened to have the right adapter that made them work with this whole setup, so I was very happy about that. And then there was another little issue with the fans where one of them, the bottom one, was making a little rattling noise when I first started up the computer and that was pretty easily fixed. I was able to just pop off the front panel and tighten it and now it's not making that noise anymore. But I guess that's all part of the process. It's how you learn. I would definitely recommend this case to anybody who was doing a budget build. For the amount of money I spent buying this, it really had a lot of nice features. For instance, you can take off the side panels without even needing a screwdriver. It just has a little screw that you can undo with your hands. And it's very easy to pop off the front panel too. You just pull it and it comes right off. Also had some nice room for cable management. Not that I utilized it in any <laughs> good or organized way, but it did have some room for cable management, which was very nice. Overall, I enjoyed working with this case. I'm glad everything came together okay, and I'm looking forward to giving it to my mom and dad tomorrow. If anybody has any feedback on this build, definitely leave them in the comments down below. I am a relatively new PC builder, and I don't mind constructive criticism. So if you have a suggestion for how I can improve this build, or just improve as a builder in general, please let me know. And like I said in my first video, if you were thinking of doing a build, I hope this might inspire you to give it a try, because if I can do it, I'm pretty sure literally anybody on planet Earth can do it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you going on this little adventure with me. I do hope to upgrade my little pink computer in the future. So there'll probably be a video about that and we'll see if there are any other PC building adventures that happen. I feel like the issue with me is that every time I finish a build, I just want to do another one because it is kind of a fun roller coaster of a experience, I think. So I don't even know if that made sense. I really need to go to bed. I will see you guys next time. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye.